Hi, and welcome to Optimization Problems in Calculus. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas El Paso and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. This is a lecture for Math 14 Calculus at UTEP. We use Larson's 11th edition calculus text this semester, and of course that's going to change even though this video is going to linger on forever. Uh, chapter 3, Applications of Differentiation. Section 3.7 is Optimization, and this is Part 1. Optimization problems require a little bit of description. And in this little bit of description, these videos can get quite long. I don't want the lecture to be too long, so I cut it into two parts. I consider them kind of some basic random examples in the first, and then real life things that happen in part two. So for some guidelines for solving applied min and max problems. Identify all given quantities and all quantities to be determined. If possible or necessary, make a sketch. Not every problem needs a sketch. Write a preliminary equation for the quantity that is to be maximized or minimized. Reduce the primary equation to one having a single independent variable. This is single, valuable, uh, single variable calculus. We're only going to use one variable at a time. Later semesters, you'll get into multivariable, multi, uh, multivariate calculus. Let me say that correctly. In which case, you don't have to eliminate them. But here, we're going to eliminate. We're going to get down to a single variable. It'll use uh, secondary equations or relations. We want to determine a feasible domain of the primary equation. We don't want negative time or a negative length of a box or something like that. Uh, so it has to make sense. And we're going to determine the desired maximum or minimum using calculus techniques of using the first derivative. So our first problem, find two positive numbers such that the product is 185 and the sum is a minimum. So let's take out to, to what do we what do we see here? I see first find two positive numbers. All right, two positive numbers. Let them be x and y. The product is 185. Product is 185, and the sum is a minimum. And the sum is a minimum is going to be just a general equation s for sum because I'm that clever equals x plus y. Sum we add them. Now the sum equation is our primary equation. Notice this primary equation has two variables. I know you're thinking s is not a variable, but s depends on two variables. We want to use the product equation to help eliminate one of those variables. So if x y equals 185, then y is equal to 185 over x. I'm going to replace this y value as 185 over x in my s equation, and now s is in terms of a single variable. Here we go. The sum is a minimum, so the sum, which is x plus y, we're going to replace that with x e uh, with equal to x plus 185 over x. That's the y we found on the previous screen. The minimum will occur at a critical number, so we're going to find the derivative. First, I rewrite s, uh, x plus 185 over x. Remember that denominator. I can always bring my x across the fraction bar, changing the sign of the exponent. It's easier to find the derivative of this. Derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 185 x to the negative 1 is negative 185 x to the negative 2. And then I'll rewrite it with positive exponents because I can work with positive exponents better. Now, s prime does not exist at x equals 0. But we're looking for two positive numbers such that the product is 185. I know it's 0 is not, it's not a positive number. It's not going to give me a product with anything that equals 185. So I don't have to worry about where the derivative doesn't exist. That's an, a ridiculous answer. So let's solve s prime equals 0. S prime uh, equals 1 minus 185 over x squared, set it equal to 0. If 185 over x squared equals 1, then x squared equals 185, and x will be the square root of 185. Uh, based on the conditions of our problem, I only have to worry about the principal square root, not the negative square root, the positive square root, uh, because of the problem. So the sum is a minimum. I have my first derivative, and I got an answer of a critical number of x equals to the square root of 185. But how do I know for sure this is a minimum? What I could do is I could find the second derivative, which is 2 times 185 x to the negative 3, also known as 370 over x cubed. And since 
The second derivative at the square root of 185 is positive. The second derivative test, right? Second derivative is positive or concave up. Concave up means I'll have a minimum. So I know that if x equals the square root of 185 and y equals 185 over the square root of x, then y equals the square root of 185 also. Uh, the product is 185 and the sum is a minimum. Minimum, I confirmed it by the second derivative test. Find the length and width of a rectangle that has a perimeter of 80 meters and a maximum area. So our perimeter, which is 80, is always 2L plus 2W, and I drew a little sketch here. But everything has a multiple of 2, so I'm going to simplify that. 40 equals L plus W, or uh, 40 minus W equals L. So I've already looked at my secondary equation. I've already solved for one variable. I really should have... Uh, maximum area. I should have written down my primary equation first. My area is length times width for a rectangle. Very important to know the shape. But I know that length is 40 minus width. So 40 minus width times width is 40 width minus width squared. The derivative is 40 minus 2w. The derivative is 0. When we solve, 0 equals 40 minus 2w. So I add 2w to both sides, divide by 2. When the width is 20, but I know the second derivative. Right? If I take the derivative here, it's negative 2. The second derivative is always negative, so it's concave down. If the second derivative is always negative, always concave down, I know that w equals 20 is a maximum. If w equals 20, length will equal 20 as well, which I'm sure is on the next slide. Let's see. Hey, look at that. If w equals 20, then the length equals 20, and a, just a little straight fact for you, a rectangle of maximum area is always going to be a square. Want to maximize your area? Make a square. All right, find the point on the graph of f of x equals x minus 1 all squared that is closest to the point negative 5, 3. If you need to, draw it, think about it. I have the graph of x minus 1 all squared. So here at 1, we're going to have a parabola. We're going to pretend that we touch. At negative 5, 3, we'll have some point, And we're looking for this distance. I want to minimize this distance. OK, so what do I need to do? Closest to 2 tells us to find the minimum distance. Using the distance formula, we have points, right? x comma y, negative 5 comma 3, and x comma y. Of course, I've already eliminated my second variable using the function. In the distance formula, um, yeah, that, that doesn't look fun at all. Look at that. The squared, and then I do some stuff, and then I square it again, and it's the square root of all of it. The derivative will be easier if we simplify the radicand to a polynomial. So we're going to simplify underneath the radical. I'm going to multiply x minus 1 times x minus 1, and then I'm going to do 3 minus that result, and then I'm going to square that. I'm going to square the negative 5 minus x, and then I'm going to combine like terms. In doing so, this is where you see dot dot dot, a miracle happens. You should pause, make sure I'm right, but I'm pretty sure this is the square root of x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 8 x, wow, where did I go? x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus x squared plus 18x plus 29, all under the radical. And finding the derivative to find the minimum. Okay, looks like part of my typing here got erased. So my derivative is of the inside, right? outside, one half. Leave the inside alone. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Now the derivative of the inside, 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 2x plus 18. That's an 18. You can't tell because I've just made it super messy. But I'm going to put it here. There we go. Our derivative. Ugh. But I could simplify that derivative. And when I did simplify that derivative, uh, the 1 half canceled a 2 from everything in the numerator. I have the square root of my uh, regular function. The derivative will be 0 when the numerator is 0. Now, a cubic equal to 0, there is a, a 
cube formula and you are more than welcome to look that up but it takes like a whole page to write it so using pre-calculus techniques i could use the rational zeros theorem and various other things to find that the only real zero of the numerator is when x equals negative one the other two roots are complex we could use the second derivative test to see if this is a minimum or yeah look at us we're great we did it we got it right so when x equals negative one we're going to have a minimum Let's see, when x is negative 1, our y value is 4. The point negative 1 comma 4 on the graph of f of x equals x minus 1 all squared is the closest to the point negative 5, 3. Let's look at traffic. One little example of something real life, but we don't get a flow rate given to us very often. You'll eventually have to be able to develop this. On a given day, the flow rate F in cars per hour on a congested roadway is F equals V over 22 plus 0 0.02 V squared, where V is the speed of the traffic in miles per hour. What speed will maximize the flow rate on the road? Well, maximize flow rate. Maximize tells us we're going to have to look at a derivative. Derivative of what? Derivative of the flow rate. So when I find the derivative using the quotient rule, I'm going to simplify. I know that the denominator is never zero. V squared is zero or higher. When I multiply by 0.2, it's zero or higher. And when I add 22, it'll be 22 or larger, and then I square it, and it's still positive. So my denominator will never be zero. F prime is always defined. Uh, when the numerator is 0, our uh, derivative will be 0, so 22 minus 0 0.02v squared gives me a v value of the square root of 1100. But I got to tell you, if you're sitting in the passenger seat and you tell your friend, hey, it turns out if you go the square root of 1100 miles per hour on the stretch of the road, it'll be perfect for the flow rate. And your friend will look at you and maybe pull over until you can get out. So sometimes it's really important to use an exact value, and other times say in real life situations, it's more important to use the approximation. Tell your, your friends you, you should go 33 miles per hour and they'll accept you a lot longer than, hey, go the square root of 1100 miles per hour. Um, I could test points to confirm that this is a maximum, but I'm gonna leave that for the listener to verify. Thanks again for listening to the lecture.